Hello, my name is Anuska and welcome to my channel. Now, on this week's video, I wanted to talk about this idea of quick tips or quick fixes for the voice and why I don't believe that they work. Now, I get it if you're on here, if you're on YouTube, if you're Googling, if you're looking for stuff, you probably are looking for some tips on how to maybe feel or sound more confident, how to sound more authoritative or assertive. Maybe you want to speak slower, which is a popular video of mine. Maybe you want to speak faster. Maybe you want to find more dynamics in your voice or clearer articulation. You're probably looking for some kind of quick tip that you can apply and then bang, it's all done. But unfortunately, the voice doesn't really work that way. And you may absolutely get through a quick meeting or a presentation with a quick tip. But if you really want lasting change and you want to create new patterns and new ways of using your voice, it's not going to happen overnight and it's not going to happen with a quick tip. So I'm going to talk a little bit more about why I say that, both from the sort of physical side of the voice and the emotional side, because they're both very, very important and drive why I say what I say. It's also for this reason that I'm very aware of that, this fact and acutely aware of this fact. And so when I create my videos, even when I do offer tips or ideas, I like to make it very clear that you have to actually consistently do something. So just doing it once, your voice isn't going to change. First of all, I mean, I have been using my voice in high demand situations for over 20 years, both as a singer and a speaker. So I'm talking about this both from my own personal experience, but also I've been training clients around the world, all different ages, male and female, for over a decade. So I, I've seen it in my own coaching and teaching, and I've seen it in my own voice. It doesn't matter who you are, we're dealing with muscle when we're dealing with the voice, which brings me on to the first point, which is to produce voice, to produce sound, we're using over a hundred muscles, small muscles, and it requires a lot of coordination. So much like going to the gym, lots of muscles are involved, we want to get strong, we want to get flexible, we want to get healthy. You wouldn't go to the gym once or you wouldn't just do something quickly once and then think, that's it, I'm done. You know, when it comes to the body, you have to kind of keep doing it. And it's the same with the voice. It's about consistency and repetition. And I can probably see you're rolling your eyes now. Oh, I don't want to do that. I just want something quick to get me through a meeting. So as I say, it depends on what you want. And, you know, if you're trying to create lasting change, that's not how the voice works. We're building new muscle memory patterns and that takes time. So for example, if you're a speaker who would like to find more authority or strength in your voice, and maybe you feel at the moment like your voice is quite weak or quiet or soft, there's going to be a certain element of retraining certain muscles and probably releasing other muscles. So there's probably muscles that aren't really engaged in the way they need to be engaged at the moment. And there'd be muscles that you're probably recruiting that don't need to be involved at all. And so when we're training a voice, particularly for sort of that authority and strength and power, it does take a little bit of time because we're repatterning. We are creating new muscle memory patterns and that doesn't happen overnight so that's why i say first of all that it just requires at least a month of short consistent practices but the other part of this too is it's very very hard to do this yourself it's very hard particularly when you've been speaking a particular way your whole life, you know, 20, 30, 40, 50 plus years, and you've been using your voice in a particular way, we often can't see the picture when we're in the frame. So we don't even know what we're doing. So we wouldn't even know how to kind of feel something or even hear something if, if we're just so used to it, like a fish in water. It doesn't know any different. And even just as an example from my own life, I mean, I still have voice lessons today and I have them less frequently now than I used to, but probably, you know, at least once a month, I'll check in with my incredible teacher. And even the other day, she pointed something out to me and I was like, I had no idea I was doing this thing, but I know I've been doing it as long as I can remember. 
And just when she said that, I was like, wow. And when I was aware, I was able to kind of find even more freedom in my own voice. And I thought, you know, I've been doing training for so long. And so, you know, it's it's so hard to do this yourself when you are when you've been living with your voice the way it is for potentially decades. And that's why when I work with new clients now, there's a minimum of a six week commitment because it takes at least four weeks to create new habits. So I want to make sure that when people leave working with me, the pattern now is way more kind of embodied and developed that they can kind of then just run with it, do their little practices, but essentially it's much more embodied than if I just saw them once and never saw them again. So secondly, and these are both important, but they kind of feed into each other, is the emotional side of our voice. And our voice forms part of our identity. We're very attached to our voice. That's why people can like cringe at the sound of their voices. And usually we have quite a strong emotional attachment to our voice, not only in terms of our accent and, and where we're from, but also just in our tone of voice, in our voice quality, we're often very attached to that as being part of who we are and part of our identity. Now, from my work, the Jungian psychology work, the voice forms part of the persona. And so the vocal habits that we've created are actually feeding that persona. So for example, if you are someone that has, I'm just using this same example, if you are someone that has a very sort of soft, quiet voice, but you're trying to create a more powerful, authoritative voice and you want people to listen to you, you want to show up in meetings and make more of an impact, there's a couple of things that have to happen. I mean, first, you've got to actually physically train the muscles to strengthen. But there's also almost like a letting go of the old identity, because there's something about that kind of soft, quiet voice that has served you, that has kept you safe in the world. And letting in this more assertive, this more powerful voice is going to be a threat to that ego part of you, which has created this persona for a reason. And so part of my work is to help clients sort of understand why they've created the persona they've created and then to allow them to break free from that so they can then choose how they show up in the world. And what happens is because we are then moving outside of that old patterning or the old conditioning around our identity, like I am the person with the weak, quiet voice, we start moving towards building strength, building power, building authority in our voice, the ego is not going to like this. It is going to push back. And so if you're just doing this on your own at home, you will probably buy into all the stories the ego comes back with. And I hear this with clients that I've worked with, you know, what will people think of me if I start sounding more authoritative? What will people think of me if I sound too aggressive? You know, they get very concerned about sounding too powerful because people are used to them using their voice in a particular way and this is just the ego talking this is just the ego trying to kind of pull you back bring you back to safety bring you back to comfort and if you're trying to do this on your own you will buy into those stories and how this can often show up is either things will happen in your life and you will just not have time to practice there'll be all the excuses under the sun as to why you haven't practiced it could also be that even when you are practicing, you're not fully allowing yourself to go into the exercise as much as you could. So you might be holding back. So you're, you're doing the exercise, but not to the extent that you could do. And this is where having someone like myself there is really useful because I can gently, compassionately encourage you to move towards that fear, move towards this new self that's being developed because truthfully the true you your true voice your true authentic voice is powerful is open is expressive and that's what the ego fears the ego fears this true powerful self emerging so it's going to do whatever it can to pull you back and so sometimes that's just not ever allowing yourself to kind of do voice coaching in the first place you know you might have all the excuses why you don't have time or I don't have the money or even if you do do it 
it could be that you find reasons to not practice or not practice as fully as you could. So this isn't to beat yourself up. We all have an ego. We all have an ego that's trying to pull us back all the time to safety. But this is why another reason why quick tips don't work, because there's something deeper that's driving the voice. And one other thing I just wanted to say, too, is the ego loves quick tips because actually on some level, it knows there's not going to be any significant change. It knows you're going to go back. So it's like, yeah, you can have a quick tip. So actually, from an ego perspective, the ego loves it. But if you really want to find that transformation in your voice to create change, to really see what's possible in your voice, then you have to go out of the comfort zone. You have to go towards where you've never been. And, you know, the true voice is encompasses everything. Gen gentle, soft, powerful, strong, loud, quiet, fast, slow. It's everything. So I hope that's helped. I, it's a really interesting topic because the reason I wanted to talk about it is because there's obviously a lot of videos out there offering tips and guidance on voice. There's lots of articles about it. And I get requests all the time for, can I just have a quick session? Can I just do this? You know, and I always say the same thing. It's like, if you really want to create change, it's not going to work. So thank you so much for watching. If you have resonated with this and you would like to find out more about how I work with clients, I'll put the link below. If you have any comments or questions also, please comment below. And of course, always please do like, share or subscribe if this resonated with you. So thank you so much and I will see you on my next video.